Well, man, it's not every day you fight someone like Clay Guida. <laughs> I'm curious if, as you're heading into this Saturday, you're thinking, man, what a name to have on my resume. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to fight someone like Clay Guida. I plans to go out there and give him my all. Yeah. Do you sort of, because he's been around for so long, right, you've got more tape to watch on him than any of your other opponents probably. Do you know exactly what to expect in the cage on Saturday? Yeah, um, I know Clay's going to come and try to bully me. I know he's a cardio freak and he's going to try to just walk me down, you know. Does that make it easier to prepare in training because you know what you're expecting or does it make it harder because you're like, damn, I have to train for a certain way, for a certain style over and over? I don't feel like it's easier. I feel like um, I just like got something specific to do, you know. Um, in Clay's, I feel like he's a veteran and he, he has so much experience that I mean, he does, he's not going to get um, scared like when like to the first punch or like to the first thing I do. So I got to go out there and just be very patient, um, be very smart and just go out there and break it little by little and get the win. Yeah. You know that the fans are going to pay attention to this because of his status in the sport. Does that excite you to be able to perform in front of the fans who are obviously going to be going crazy? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of fans after this Saturday. Um, yeah. We're going to put on a show and I'm going to get that win. Is that part of the motivation? Like, look, oh, you might be tuning in for him, but next time you'll be tuning in for me because I'm going to take his shine and bring it to <laughs> me. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I could take Clay's shine because he's been so around so long. So, but, uh, I mean, I'm going out there and I'm going to go try to finish him and go give a show up to the fans and get them all excited. That's nice, man. Good luck. Rafa over here. Um, obviously, Mexican MMA right now is booming like never before. I know you're very proud of your heritage. Um, talk to me about like how proud you are to, to kind of see um, Mexicans doing so well and Mexican res representation in the UFC. I mean, I'm very proud because, I mean, it took a long time for us to get here. Um, I feel like my fighting style is very Mexican. I'm always going forward and just throwing a lot of punches. I'm never backing down. I mean, it's, I feel like all my fights are never boring. I feel <laughs> it's always like blood. I mean, something, you know. Um, so, I mean, that's a Mexican style of fighting right there. I know Dana's been teasing maybe doing a card at some point back in Mexico that, you know, that's one of his priorities going forward. So is that something that you would love to do at some point in time, I'm assuming? Yeah, of course. I mean, I've only fought in I fought, I started my career in Mexico, my four, four or fives, but after that, I've only fought once in Mexico City. Um, I mean, it'd be awesome for me to go back out, um, out there and just give the fans a show. And it seems like International Fight Week this uh, year is going to have Yair and Brandon Moreno on that card. Um, so maybe uh, that would be a nice one for you to turn around yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, the Vegas is like second home for us, you know, <laughs> so we got to go out there. Great, thanks. Hey, Rafa. Um, there, there was a lot of hype on you coming from Combate, do you feel like you're finally getting the respect that you're, um, that you deserve? Um, you know, obviously you, you didn't start so hot in the UFC, but now you, like you finally found your footing and you're, I think, I don't know, do you, do you feel like you're finally getting the respect you've, you're getting? I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit more momentum, you know? Um, I mean, you just got to take it a five by day, um, five by five, and you just go out there and give it my best, you know? Um, I mean... I came in undefeated, got a few losses. I mean, they didn't feel good, but I mean, it was just all learning and experience. Um, I mean, I got here in the UFC trying to like, trying to be like super bad and just like trying to get always get that finish. And I mean, that doesn't work here. You got to break through a little by little. Everybody's been tested. Everybody's been through a war. So you just got to be smarter out here. Was it true that it was Cub Swanson what was the one that did tell you like, you you know you finally got to the UFC and then you, you were trying to like bring your style that you that you came in and he was like the one that told you like stop and, and kind of like chill out. Yeah, he told me because I mean I felt like when I fought Nazarot I, I came out super hard in the first and second round then I started guessing now when I fought Grissom Marker I did the same thing I was always hurting people but um, I was like starting to slow down by the end of the round he was like look dude like you can hit people like so hard but you gotta you know that they don't go down by the first punch you, you gotta like calm down like be smarter like piece them up, you know, little by little, because, I mean, they don't fall for, for the first punch. Everybody's been tested. Everybody's been through a war. Like, everybody here is the best in the world. So, I mean, they, they don't get scared. I mean, they, they have the same goal as you. you. You were talking about blood a little bit earlier. Uh, speaking of blood, there was a lot of blood on you last fight. Um, was that the most blood you've ever tasted? Yeah, for real. So, no, that was 20% of my blood right there. But, uh, I mean, at the moment, I, to be honest, I just wanted to get that finish, you know. I was going, like, so hard because I was like, man, you know how judges are. They, they, uh, they go with a lot of basic uh, damage, you know. So I wanted to go out there and just, like, leave it clear that I won. Um, I mean, <laughs> it, was, it was a hard fight, you know. Um, and then finally, did you do half your camp at, uh, in Colorado, half your camp in, in uh, California? Yeah, no, I always do, like, most of my camping in Denver. I just do the last two weeks with Cup out there in California just to go review and 
over the game plan and just like work the specific things that he wants me to do. What do you think of uh, Justin Gaethje versus Rafa Rafa? Rafa? Is it man, Gaethje is awesome. <laughs> He's just a badass. I mean, I mean, there's the way he fights is just like I'm always excited. I uh, just watching him is just like I don't know. It's, I, I you know it's gonna be a good fight every time Gaethje fights in there. What's it like sparring that guy? Ah, uh, hard rounds. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. Hard rounds. <laughs> Rafa, en español, si puedes. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Eh, van a ser, comparado a tu primera pelea, va a ser un rival tal vez con más experiencia. Uh, ¿Qué tan diferente fue la preparación para esta pelea? How different was the preparation from your previous fight to this one? Pues nos enfocamos mucho en clay, ¿me entiendes? Es lo que nos enfocamos mucho es poner gente que siempre está moviéndose y que siempre está queriendo poner presión a, a, hacia frente hacia mí y, y siempre quiere, cuando estoy entrenando, quería hacerlo caminar a la gente para atrás, siempre hacer que ellos se caminen para atrás, porque es lo que clay quiere. Clay quiere hacerme caminar para atrás y quiere quebrarme poco a poco. Clay tiene un muy buen cardio. Siento que nunca se cansa y pienso que si... Yo que lo hago caminar en frente, lo pienso, pienso estar en su espacio, pienso no da, darle chance de respirar, pienso que eso me ayuda bastante en esta pelea. Eh, ya última pregunta, eh, la gente aquí, los latinos y mexicanos que viven en Kansas City, no, no están muy acostumbrados a tener peleadores mexicanos que vienen aquí, eh, ¿qué tan especial va a ser pelear y ser, tener apoyo latino, especialmente mexicano, y ver las banderas cuando entres al Cimobo? Ah, va a ser muy especial, ¿me todo, el, todo el apoyo de toda la gente me, me motiva bastante, siento que tengo bastante gente detrás de mí que me ha ayudado y que me ha, me ha ayudado a llegar aquí, ¿me entiendes? Con sus motivaciones y con todo, ¿me entiendes? Uh, ya me has respondido un poco a esto, pero eh, ¿cómo ves el momento de los peleadores mexicanos en el UFC? Siento que es un momento, estamos en un momento muy bueno, siento que estamos avanzando bastante, es algo que tomó mucho tiempo. Um, estoy muy orgulloso de todo de lo que, lo que se ha, ha pasado y quiero ser un, un parte, ¿me entiendes? Quiero, quiero ser un campeón yo también. Gracias, Rafa. Gracias. Hey, right here. Uh, going off the the you know the all the blood. I mean that that look. You look like you came out of a horror movie on that one, man. Like it was rough. Uh, do you like? It's weird to ask, but do you enjoy those kind of fights? Those like just just throw everything you got and see what happens. Happens. I mean, at the moment you don't realize what's going on. You know, you're just like, man, I just want to finish this guy before it, I mean, it gets worse. You know, I didn't know how bad the cut was until they told me. I mean, they took two hours just to stitch me up to stop the, stop the blood. So, I mean, that was pretty hard. <laughs> how, how real was the fear in the cage that they would, you know, the doctor might come over, look at you and be like, hey, man, uh, no more. I mean, I was pretty sure they weren't going to stop it because the cut was on top of the head. Yeah. I knew that. Um, so, I mean, maybe if it was the face, maybe they would have stopped it. But since it was on top of the head, I was just like, I'm good. And I'm not, like, showing, like, nothing that's, like, I mean, I, I felt like my my cardio kept going up, up, and up instead of going down, you know. So that's that's a sign that why the ref would stop it. Like, if you start, like, slowing down and stuff like that. And I, I didn't never, I never slowed down. Taking on an MMA legend like, like Clay Guida, what would, it win, what would it win like that? What would it mean for your resume? I mean, it would be it mean a lot, you know. He's a Hall of Famer. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Clay Guida, but I mean, I feel like the biggest respect I can show Clay Guida is going out there and giving him my best and giving him the first version of myself.